Hello and welcome to Perry Baptist Church, our online service. Good to be able to have you sharing with us through this time. Lockdown in this country is coming to an end, and in England is coming to an end. Um, we will reopen the building on Sunday the 13th. And uh, if you are within uh, a reasonable distance of Perry Baptist Church, you will be welcome to come and join with us. If not, then please continue to watch us online. We will, after the building is open, we will continue uh, to be recording the services. So for today, welcome. Now open in prayer. Let's pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, as we, as we meet together just now, we meet conscious that the government has been making its decisions about uh, moving from a lockdown position uh, within this country and also making decisions that appertain to our freedom and abilities during the Christmas period. Lord and Heavenly Father, we pray that we may dis discover the ways in which we can be wise as servants, as we make use of these new uh, regulations that lie ahead. Give us wisdom that we might be able to give a, a good presentation of yourself, whatever may be the things that hinder and pull us down. And so we pray this in your namesake. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read from Acts. Chapter 16, we took a break from Acts for the last couple of weeks. So back to Acts, chapter 16, and reading from verse 1. Paul came to Derbe, and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, and so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was Greek. As they travelled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. And so the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew daily in numbers. Paul and his companions travelled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. And so they passed by Mysia, went down to Troas. And during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia, standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace. And the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there we travelled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her hearts to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, Come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. 
and Lord have his blessing as we meditate on his word together. The story has been told of a lawyer who was new in town. He was setting up a new office and uh, so he was trying to put everything in place and then he saw through the window a man was approaching his office. Well, we just arrived and here was an opportunity for him to to be able to shine forth for what he wants, to give that opportunity for him to be able to bring in a new customer. And he wanted to make sure he impressed. And as the man entered into the, the, the room, into the office, so it was that uh, he picked, the lawyer picked up his telephone and began speaking into the telephone, talking about the different projects that he had to whoever was on the line, and letting them know about uh, the projects they had in New York, and in uh, Philadelphia, and in, uh, and in Australia, in Adelaide, in Sydney. My, he was really doing well and making sure that this person heard about all the different projects that he had in mind internationally. And then he put the phone down and as he put the phone down, so he welcomed his visitor. He said, thank you, it's good of you to pop by. How can I help you? Well, said the visitor, it's more how I can help you. You see, I'm from British Telecom, and I've come to connect your phone. He was seeking to impress, but he didn't impress at all. He was putting on an act. But the man who came to visit knew what the real situation was, knew he was just stringing him along or trying to. And in the world, and in the world today, often there are times perhaps we want to impress, we would want to try and string people along, we want them to think we're doing well when perhaps we've got nothing really to speak of. But at the end of the day, We've got a God who has called us to be the real people. We've got a God who calls us to be true to Him. We've got a God who says, I want you to be as you are. Don't put on an act. Because the world knows that it's just an act. Just be yourself in the power of the Holy Spirit. Speak the truth. Because it's the truth the world needs to hear. Speak with honesty and share the good news of Jesus. There are characters in that passage that was read today. I want us to look today at those characters, to see them as they really are. No airs and graces, no act, nothing to be put on, no string of the line here. This is how they really are. I want to look first of all at a man of faith. His name was called Timothy. Timothy. Timothy had a very mixed background. We, we can read of in this passage here how he had a mixed background in his family home. His uh, mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. No mention of any beliefs that he may have had. And I want to suggest that they weren't just of different races, but they were, had different beliefs. Uh, if, that was, if it wasn't the case, then why would they speak of the mother being a believer? But the father, there was no mention of his belief, of his faith. And so there was a different presentation in that home in terms of belief in terms of standard, in terms of faith. Those were some of the contentions that would have been in perhaps in his heart as he grew up. A mixed background, and yet despite that mixed background, I want us to say that he was a man who, for all of that, 
knew what it was to have faith that was embedded within him from the very beginning, dear within his home. In the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, the second letter of Timothy, and there Paul writes about something on the background. He wants to encourage Timothy because Timothy was going through a tough time. He, he was a man who was trying to do his best in the Lord's work and not everybody was very supportive of him. And so he wanted to remind him, Timothy, remember your roots. Remember where you came from and remember what you are and who you are. To be the real you, you're not going to put on an act here because it won't wash the real you. And Paul knew him from a young age. And so he's saying, uh, Timothy, I remember how things were as you were growing up. I remember how you sat upon your mother's knee. I remember how your mother and your granny would speak to you about the things of faith. At an early age, whatever may be the belief of the father, at an early age, Eunice and Lewis were there to speak of faith. And what faith meant to them, how it affected their lives, how it had been for the better for them. And not only that, says Paul, I remember you had faith too. That's the essence of your calling. And there are people that surround you who will claim to have great knowledge, great abilities, and you need to listen to them, but you know, your calling comes down to faith. Trusting. Trusting Jesus as your Savior, more trusting Jesus as your Lord. It's your faith that gave you the role that you're in just now as a young pastor. The man of faith, Timothy. Whatever may be the background, what really counted for him was he had heard in faith, he had heard the call of God. He had heard the call of God. Have you heard his calling in your life? To know it in the sense of that trust of a saviour. To know that Jesus can be your saviour, can be your Lord, as you trust him implicitly and completely. Do you know that calling uh, as you discover the, 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 the gifts that God's got in your life? And sometimes when you think, oh, I haven't got any gifts. I'm just an ordinary person. But I want to suggest that every one of us has a gift. It's just about discovering what it is and applying it. And when Paul writes about the gifts of the Spirit, you know, that sounds pretty high and mighty, doesn't it? And yet, in the list of the gifts of the Spirit come some very practical things like the gifts of administration, the gift of help. And the gift in your life will be different to the gifts of those who are in your own, own home, different to the gifts that are seen of the people in your church, because God gifted you uniquely, personally given to you the gifts that are relevant for the, the needs in your life. He had a testimony, and his testimony was one that was trusted. Not only was it noted for his faith, but the believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. And you know, it's not just about having faith. It's about being trusted. To know your word is reliable. And that's part of the calling God's got for you, for me. Timothy, that man of faith. And there are many of you out there, God's called to be men, women of faith. Girls and boys, if they are tuning in as well. God's got a call for all ages, for people to be men, women, young people of faith, giving their lives to him, that the best is yet to be. The best 
is yet to be. Do you know there's a story in John's Gospel, uh, and in John's Gospel we see how Jesus went to a wedding feast, and his disciples as well. They went with Mary, and as they were gathering together uh, for this wedding feast, the wedding feast tended to last a bit longer than hours do, and they ran, ran out of wine. And this was quite an embarrassment for the hosts because they hadn't looked after their guests. What were they going to do? And Mary could hear something of the flustering there. And she said to Jesus, Jesus, they've run out of wine. They've run out of wine. Now Jesus had just the answer. There were water pots there. There were huge water pots that a man could have hidden. They were big, but they were, had an important role, but not the role perhaps in our country we would think is important. It was part and parcel of hospitality. When a person came into uh, your house, you made sure that you washed their feet. It's as much hospitality as it is of offering a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Uh, I used to live in a country called Aden, and very dusty, very dry, very hot. And I knew, as I walked through that land, I could understand perfectly something of the custom that's there in the Middle East. It wasn't a ritual, it wasn't a ceremony. It was very practical, because you didn't walk very far when the sand and the dust got there in all kinds of places. They were stuck between your toes. You were not comfortable. You could never be comfortable until that was dealt with. And so part of the custom of that time, as part of the hospitality is, when somebody comes in, you offer them the washing of the feet so that they will be comfortable. That's what these water jars are for. They weren't for drinking. Those water jars were there to wash the feet of all the guests. And so Jesus says to, to the servants, see the water jars? I want you to uh, bring me some water from there. And they brought the water, and Jesus then presented it as a replacement for the wine. Can you imagine water? Not just water, but water you use for washing your feet. And how can you imagine how they would feel? But when it arrived, it was the best wine that could ever be. And they were puzzled. You know, normally, you get all the best wine out first, but they brought the best out last. The best out last. And very often it's like that in our lives. The best comes last so often because Jesus comes into the scene last in our lives. Jesus, he always brings to us the best. Always brings to us the best. But when Jesus comes on the scene, then the change is dramatic. And the world can see not just words, but a life, a testimony that's trustworthy. The man of faith, Timothy. Secondly, I want you to remember the Macedonian. The man of faith, and now the Macedonian, uh, he was a man in the vision that Paul had. We often refer to this as being the Macedonian vision. And that's quite right in a sense. Coming over to Macedonia is the call. Coming over to Macedonia. Uh, they hadn't thought about going to that part of the world. They had only thought of the Asian part of the world. But that call to Macedonia 
is a call I believe has made the difference through 2,000 years. So much so that the gospel came to where I am standing now, here in Perry, here in England, here in the United Kingdom. The gospel has come to the United Kingdom because that call, that Macedonian vision, was a Macedonian vision in which there was a call for Paul to go to Europe. Europe was last on his thoughts, but it is very much prominent in the thinking of our Lord. Europe needs the gospel. Europe needs the gospel. Not just the place where he was, but Europe needs the gospel. Europe still needs the gospel. The whole world still needs to hear good news. The whole world needs to still hear that we've got, uh, we've got in Jesus something that's far better we could ever have known but for him. The Macedonian, a man in a vision. A man in a vision who gave that call to come to Europe. Not just Macedonia, but the call goes out to Europe, because there's people there waiting to hear. There's people there who want to discover something anew. Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. There were people there who knew they needed help. Maybe you're recognizing that yourself. You need help and just don't know how to manage. You don't know how to cope. You don't know how you're going to get through whatever may be your circumstances. And, and likewise comes that call that the world needs to respond wherever we are and wherever we go. To come with the gospel. To come with the good news. And to come committed to the voice of God. God speaking with you today. God gave, giving you a call. It may not be a Macedonian. It may not be a European. But maybe it's a man, a woman, somewhere else in this world. People who are saying, Come, we need your help. Come, we need you to show us the way. Come. We need you to reveal to us the things of the Lord who made a difference for you. And there's a third character here. Once again, we're looking at characters who are presenting themselves as they really are. We've had that man of faith, Timothy. We've had the Macedonian, uh, that man in the vision who issued that call. But thirdly, I want you to remember the maid of prayer, the maid of prayer. Her name was Lydia, and by all accounts she was a very successful woman in worldly terms. She was a dealer in purple cloth. So I was, in that day and age, to be a dealer in purple cloth, you know, you were quite a good business person. But there's something more here to Lydia than just her business life. There's something more here to Lydia than just those practical kind of things of life. Lydia comes on the scene when Paul goes down to the river and he's looking for a place of prayer. We say, well, why has he gone to the river for a place of prayer? And why didn't he go to a church? Because, you know, surely a building or the church is where people are going to find places to, to pray and to worship and to fellowship. Of course, the Bible doesn't speak about the church as a building. The Bible speaks of the church as a gathered believers, people. So the church was never closed when the, the, the world had that lockdown for the pandemic. The buildings were, but the people, the believers, were still there. The church continued to be open. And so we look for a place of prayer 
and perhaps there wasn't anywhere that he knew of. But you know, when we look back to the, the story of the Jewish people, and we discover that when they were in places where there was no synagogue, it wasn't unusual for them to gather by the river. And by the river they worshipped. There's a song that uh, used to be in the British charts back in the 70s. It was actually taken straight from the Psalms. And it goes like this. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. There we wept when we remembered Zion. It was sung by a group that uh, was well known at the time as they sung, so they brought out the words of a song. But it could be you that sings it. And that psalm, what is it singing about? The people of God's people knew that they needed to have fellowship. They were away from home, they were away from the synagogue, they were away from the places of worship, and they would often gather by the river. Hence those words, by the river of Babylon, there we sat down. Hence Paul is coming to the river to find a place of prayer. A place of prayer. And quite right, you know, we see the water, and we're reminded of life, flowing water, not stagnant, for it was a river that flowed. And as that river flowed, comes a reminder, God is the giver of life. God is the giver of life. And he gives life for you and for me. And in that place of prayer by the river, who should you find? Lydia. Lydia. She was a maid of prayer. She was a believer. She was a believer. Paul and Lydia sat down and talked together, shared things deeper than perhaps Lydia had ever been in her spiritual life. And there she went through the water, not just in terms of prayer. She went through the waters to declare her love of her Lord as she was baptized there and then baptized in the river. She went into the water, and as Paul would often explain, going into the water is a declaration of what God's done for your life. What God's done for your life. Going into the water, it's a declaration of what happened when you trusted Jesus as your Saviour. Completely dead to your sin. And as you rise again, a declaration of how it is our Lord who has given us that ability to rise to eternal life. As surely as it was that Jesus was completely buried in the tomb, and on the third day he rose again. The maid of prayer makes that further step of her commitment. And in that step of commitment, so she says, listen, I, I want you to feel wholly, completely at home with me. Come to my house. Come and stay at my house. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, uh, here, what I have is yours. Come and stay at my house. To know fellowship together. And so Paul didn't need to just stay uh, fellowshipping by the river. Fellowshipping. Fellowshipping. In the home of a fellow believer. And together they were able to learn. Together they were able to pray. Together they were able to grow in the things of the Lord. May that be true for us. May we discover what it is to be men, women of faith. May we discover what it is to hear that Macedonian call in our lives uh, as we hear in a vision, perhaps, a call to go out with the good news, the gospel. May we be like that maid of prayer.
desiring to be in prayer whenever possible, however possible, as we wholeheartedly give ourselves to our Saviour, our Lord, completely, fully. Let's spend a few moments in prayer. Let's pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, I don't know the characters of all that are maybe listening here. I don't know the people. But I do know that every one of us has to learn daily. Our lives need to be true. Our lives need to be sure and certain. Our lives need to be filled with your Spirit. You know what it is to grow in grace and faith. Wherever we are today, if we never listen to the call of the Master, will we not only listen, but may we respond here and now. And so we pray this in your namesake. Amen. Thank you for being with us, sharing with us, and uh, it's good to be able to do that. Do please remember that uh, we'll be on the same channel, same time next week, and remember, if you are able to get to Perry on the 13th of December, you will be welcome to join with us. Thank you.